Well, good morning, and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Saturday in the octave of Easter, April 10th. Uh, the last day of Easter is tomorrow, or sorry, the last day of the octave of Easter is tomorrow um, with Divine Mercy Sunday. But today is April 10th, uh, Saturday, and it is the feast day of St. Michael de Sanctis, uh, which can also be translated to St. Michael of the Saints. And he is the, I think he was in the 18th century uh, in Spain, uh, but he is the patron saint of cancer patients. Today's gospel is from Mark chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. When he had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told his companions who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and had been and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them, walking along on their way to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief in hardness of heart, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Um, this is an interesting gospel, as far as for me to humanly wrap my head around it. Um, first of all, it's from Mark's gospel. This is the uh, and Mark's gospel is by far the shortest gospel of the four. And because um, there's only 16 chapters. And uh, the length is, is, like I said, much less. But the title here is, it's the longer ending of the gospel. So Mark threw in, I guess, the, these other verses. So the appearance to Mary of Magdala. Uh, the appearance of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, and then the, the commissioning of the twelve. All of these Gospels we we have read and listened to um, earlier earlier this week through either John's longer account or Luke's longer account. Uh, but we've heard them all this week, but Mark um, shortens them all. Um, and he, he gets around this theme on belief. And he is... You know, mentioning how Mary Magdalene was the first, and she told the disciples, and they were skeptical, and they didn't believe. Um, and then on the road to Emmaus, again, they did not believe. You know, so Jesus, I'm sure, he's, you know, he's got to be getting frustrated. Um, but yet he still loves them. Um, and he, you know, he still is persistent in making sure that he reveals himself to them. Otherwise, like I said yesterday, the church wouldn't exist, and it wouldn't have been able to withstand all of the attacks of the church throughout all of history, um, and even today. Um, and then, you know, Jesus straight up says, um, whenever he's commissioning the 11, uh, which we heard, again, earlier this week, um, he rebuked them for their unbelief and their hardness of heart because they did not believe those who saw him after he was, after he was raised. So Jesus is like, he's, he's critical of them, and he's like challenging them of, to get over themselves and get over their human reason and limitations and just have faith. And so you can see that, you know, it's just a challenge and it always will be a challenge until we're, until we're dead and we finally meet our maker and God willing, make it to heaven someday. That's the goal. Um, hopefully, otherwise you're only condemning yourself. Um, but, What's interesting is directly after that line, in Mark's gospel, it says, he said to them, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. After he had just told them not to believe. But again, this is Mark's gospel, which is a shorter gospel. So Mark is throwing other stuff in um, towards the end. Um, so like, how do we wrap our head, heads around it? You know, How do we understand it? How do we... How are we convicted? How can we spread the gospel if we ourselves are weak in it? You no, know, it's too easy to just 
not ask questions and just say, ah, well, it's too complicated to figure out, so why, why should I even take the time and effort to do so? That is not utilizing the gifts of our intellect that God gave us. Um, so that's really the challenge is like, what are you doing um, and what am I doing uh, at this current stage of the game to grow in faith and knowledge and understanding um, with the basis of belief first? Because you have to believe um, and have faith and trust that our research is going to bear fruit. Um, so, you know, that's that's the goal. Uh, what are we what are we doing? Um, am I reading some scripture? Am I doing, you know, maybe something that's a little little easier in the modern world that we live in, of the hustle and bustle? Uh, you know, Father Mike Schmidt's Bible, uh, Bible in a year, um, or you know, just reading a, a good virtuous book, or learning what virtue is. Um, you know, it, it says proclaim the gospel to every creature, but it's a it, we can't proclaim it with words unless we actually know what it is. Um, and we can see in the world of which we live in um, that there's a lot of confusion going on. We have kids that are growing up in a world that people are questioning if they're male or female. So it's a, it's a tough challenge, but it's a challenge that we all should embrace and try to learn and understand more so that we can speak with conviction while also demonstrating love at the same time. So God bless. Keep it real. Enjoy that daily challenge as I try to as well. In the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit, amen.